Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, Lili Nishmas Imi Merosi Rusmas Mordechai. Bezer Hashem, if you see this shear, I'm right now on a plane going to Africa, to Kenya. The Chaveirim and the Mishtatrim of the shear, they got me an unbelievable gift. I have a lot, a lot of Akars Atoiv taking me to probably the best safari in the world, to the Masai Mara in Kenya. So I'm traveling right now at 7.15 a.m. Sunday morning, and therefore I pre-recorded this on Friday. Bezer Hashem, because Gary decided to come along as well with Avi and Noam and some other guys, Yishkayach, we hope that the shirim will flow smoothly and we'll be able to upload it. And Akash Baruch should help that everything should go in the proper way. So Yishkayach for holding on. Don't fall out of this year now. Everything's going to be great. I'm looking forward to showing you some of the Neflois Habayra, maybe recording some things with some Givaldika animals, etc. This is the class of Rabbi Palik at Or Eliyahu in Los Angeles. He's formerly from Baltimore, Rabbi Isai. Here we go, nice and loud. Now, if you remember yesterday, or when was it? The other day, we were talking about Nitzchu Arelim Samatsukim. So I found online the, the professional, the guy from Bnei Brak who does this for a living and he announces it on a, on a microphone in Eretz Yisrael. He saw the shear. And he sent in his own version for the share. Check this out, Rabbi Sai. Yehudim tzadikim, itztarfu od ayom la shiur adaf ayoyimi shel Rabbi Eli Stefanski Shlite. Vetiru yeshuot bechol ha'inyonim. Okay, Givaldi. This uh, email, I know the person who wrote it. But I was shocked to learn that he does the daf with us. And uh, it brought a tear to my eye. At least one. Please do not use my name. I was by my son for Shemini at Sarah. I was walking to Shul on the first day. It was extremely difficult was long, and long for me. So I decided not to go to Shul on Sukkot Star at night. Happily, after my son and grandson returned from Shul, his neighbor and three teenage, teenage sons came over to make a coffee for me. I told him what you had said. That we should be dancing with our Gemaris. So that is what we did. Imagine a house in New York. The Olam is going in a circle, holding on to Gemaris. That I even had a Gemaris, interesting. As I'm sure you know, two and a half years ago, I almost died from COVID. I'm convinced that it was only the Tehillim and Tefillahs of literally thousands upon thousands of people from around the world, globe that forced HaKadosh Baruch Hu to put me in the Mi Yichia column. I had never done the Daf for an extended period and it's something that I wanted to do. With all my swarm packed away due to some work we were going, doing at home, I purchased the Archville Shas pad. It arrived the day before you began the Sechel Ksubis, so that's when I began. But without a real safer in my hands, I knew that I would fall behind the Rosh Hashanah and Sukkot, so I bought one and it kept me on track. And that's how we had the Gemara to dance with on Simchas Torah. I can't wait to finish Ksubis in a few short days. Thank you. Once again, please do not use my name. Yishkoyach. And Rufua Shlema Shlema. Today, the sponsor of the Koilo, the entire month is Lili Nishmas Chaya Bas Yosef. The Mesechta, sponsor of Lili Nishmas Yosef, Baruch Ben Moshe Aaron, and Lili Nishmas Moshe Allah, and another Shalom, and for that stuff, I'm going for my children. The second sponsor of the Mesechta, Jeff Razin, is Chus, my son, Yosef Simcha, Chaim, Ben, Sarah Khan, Rufu Shlema. Amen. Rest of the Mesechta, the official Mitzvah of Motivators. Avra Menash, Menchana Broch, and Rufu Shlema. Paras Achoydish, Moshe Ben Zachary, Lili Nishmas, Moshe Ben Zachary. Paras Ashavua, Vladislav, Zakharov, and Dizchut, that I finished my research by February. Let us know how it went. Paras Ashavua number two, Lezech and Nishmas, Avra Menachom, Ben Rufol Yitzchot. Paras Hayoim, Shmuel Eidler, on the yard side of my father, Leo Yoichan, Ben Aram Yosef, all of Ashol. Now, I do want to mention, there's a new... Sponsor, the monthly sponsor, mdymonthly.com, Arye Bik, 72 Shekel. And here, I'm going to start mentioning once in a while, the ones who went above $100 a month. Mark Ashkenazi, Mendel Lerner, 
Evan Weinstein, Abba Rennert. What do I call him? I don't even remember what I call him today. Abba Rennert, Tzvi Shir, Yishkoyach Godel. Also, the Siyom, Amisach Tzvi is coming up very shortly. Everybody should check out mdycm.com to see where your local Siyom are. Usually we have 20 or so Siyom, Los Angeles, Baltimore, everywhere. So check it out. Of course, as you know, going to London for the Siyom and to Manchester. So a lot of guys are coming along. Beis Hashem, it's going to be a tremendous, fantastic time. And that, of course, means, Rav Boise, don't forget, Nidorim is starting. Nidorim is starting just in a few days, four or five days from now. So don't forget to be mezaka, think to yourself, what have I done to bring a person to Torah? What have I done? Forget the free Gemara, forget everything else. Somebody to Torah, somebody can change his life. Go out there, it's a great Masechta, go bring him in. And also, I was asked to tell the Oilam that Rabbi Geffen is making a chasana this, tonight, tonight, Sunday, <laughs> it's Sunday now. Tonight in Bet Shemesh, Ulamei HaKramim. So here we go. We're holding by the Mishnah. All the way in the bottom. The Mishnah is sponsored by Moshe Kohen Luzchos for living at Torah and continuing at Slochem and Parnosa. Ha-poisek mois l'chasono. It happens a lot. The second part also happens, unfortunately. Person promises a son-in-law, his new son-in-law, he promises him money. U-pasha lo haregel. So in Hebrew, Pashat Taregel means he went bankrupt, belly up. It's slightly different. It means, and it comes from the Mishnah, this Lashen. It means he shows him the bottom of his foot full of mud, full of dirt here. You can have this. Reb Shimshim Pinko says, where in the world do you ever have that some random person comes over to another random person and says, here, here's a half a million dollars. Never happens. But if that other random person is the chassan, then it happens. You have a random person who barely knows the chassan. He promises, I'm going to buy you a, an apartment in Yerushalayim. Give him half a million dollars. Says Reb Shimshin, if so, if we act as the chassan of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, chassan Torah, we just came from Simchas Torah. You learn HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Torah, now you're a son-in-law, now you're a chassan. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will shower us, Bezer Hashem, with money which is not deserving, will give us Parnosa Berevach. So, the father-in-law promised X amount of money, so now we kind of punish the daughter, which hopefully will get the father-in-law straight. Teishev Achet Tal Ben Roisha. He's not going to marry her, even though typically like the first Mishnah Subas, there's a typical time and period that about a year, you do Eris and then you do Nisun. Over here, you can just wait until she, her, her hair turns white. In other words, he's not Mechuyiv to marry her until the father-in-law fulfills his promise. Now, Taisvis over here, top Taisvis, two lines down, says a major Chiddush. For me, it's a massive Chiddush. Because we were talking about the whole Sugi and we didn't mention this Taisvis. We didn't know about this Taisvis. That there's one thing, at least, that people don't have to write a Shtar for. And Eilu Dvarim, Aniknim Ba'amira, these are things that are just by saying and speaking it out, you are Mechaev yourself. And that is Chasen, father-in-law to the Chasen, to the Kala. These are things that the Mechutanim, that's why they call them Mechutanim. They make a deal and you have to keep the deal even if it's not in writing. It says Taisves, that's only if they become, if this Kiddushin immediately after the deal. But if you wait a little bit, then the deal is off. That's one Chiddush. Another thing that I saw all the way at the end of Taisvis, five lines before the bottom, I just like this Lashem. It says, Vanichi pasti bi Yerushalmi. I searched through Yerushalmi and Mutsasi and I found, and he goes on to say something that he found over there that's Dafka by a father who, who gives money, who says he's going to give his daughter money, but not a woman to a daughter and not a brother to a sister. Okay. But I thought it was interesting. I says, I looked, I searched in Yerushalmi. You think the Taisus knows the whole Yerushalmi about pet? Okay, fine. He searched in Yerushalmi, he found it. Says the Mishnah, this is a continuation of Shnei Dayon Xeris. The two Dayonim they were able to make Xeris in Yerushalayim. One of them was Chanan, one of them was Adlan. So over here we have another Allah that Abin says, Admin Oimer, Yechoyli, Yishitoimer. The 
Kala could say, If I was the one that made the deal with you, why do I have to suffer because my father lied to you? If it was me doing the deal, you're right. Actually, I have a You have two choices. Either you marry me, or give me a get, get me out of here. But you can't hold me hostage for a promise that my father made. Omer Gamliel, Royani is Divri Admon. As we're going to see in the Gemara, because it says Royani is Divri Admon, the halach is like Admon in these three Mishnahis that it says Royani, Rabbi Gamliel says Royani is Divri Admon. Says the Gemara, Maslisan Loikai Tano, the Sanyo, our mission is not like the Tano that says, Omer is Rabbi Yudolin Nechliku Admon, Chachomim Ala Poisik, Mois Lechas Sonu, Yuposha Lois Aregel. So the, the Bryce is different. The Bryce, instead of saying like the Mishnah that the father is the one that promised, it's very different. The whole Machlegas is when she herself did the deal, not the father. In that case, since she's the one that made the deal, she has to sit and suffer. Keep your deal. So what does Admin say? I was under the assumption that my father is going to cover me. It's normal. A lot of, a lot of people, they, they give money for their daughter. And she thought that her father is one of them. But now that my father is not covering for me, I don't have an income. I was, I was counting on my father. I'm sorry, you're right, I misspoke. I thought my father was going to do it. But now that he's not, there's two options. Either marry me or don't. But don't let me sit there until I'm an old maid. On this brysa, again, the same lotion. I see and I like Admin's svara. Ton. So we just saw in the brysa, the chacham say, we don't force. We're talking about a, a mature woman, but a, a minor, no. Uh, we, 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 we force. Says the Gemara, what are we talking about? Who are we forcing? We force the father to pay up. It should be the opposite. Why? Because when a G'dayla, we're talking about in the Brisa, the Brisa says, that the girl herself made the deal. Well, if the girl is a mature, she's an adult, she's past bas mitzvah, she has the right to make deals. So her deal is a deal, and therefore, okay, it makes sense. Okay, maybe for whatever reason, I, if you want to, it's hard to understand, but for whatever reason, we'll force the father to keep the daughter's deal. At least it's a deal. But if we're talking about that the, it's the daughter who's a ktana, it's not even a deal. She still spoke nothing. Narishkeit, shtusim. How could a 10-year-old make deals? Elomarava must be Kaifin Labal get. Who do we force? We force the husband to release her. Okay, so again, When do we say the Chacham say you don't have to force when she's an adult? But a katana, we force the guy to give her a get and release her because she's a katana. It's not her fault. She's, she doesn't know what she's doing. Omar Mishmed now, side thing. Like in our Mishnah, the other Mishnah, it says, I see, I like what Admin says, Rungam Lil says, then that means we paskin like Admin. How many times does he say that? Three times. Okay. Now, the Brisa was that she herself. She herself made the deal. So do we also pass in the Brisa like Admin? Omar Lei, Miko Amrina by Mishnah. Bukhom Bakim Shamarungam Leel Ka Amrina. Did I say specifically Mishnah? I meant anywhere. Well, we have to point out that the Mishnah and the Brisa contradict each other. So what it means to say is that if, mark it this way, mark it this way. In other words, if you hold that the Brisa is correct, then Rungam Leel pass in like the Brisa. If you hold that the mission is correct, the Ringam Leel Paskin like Adma. If you hold that the Bryce is correct, the Ringam Leel Paskin like Adma. You, you'd say what you want to hold like. You want to hold like. The, obviously, we can't say that both of them are correct. 
Omer Reb Zera, Omer Rav Mariyim, Yishnei Dvarim Shomer Chanon, Halacha Ki Yoytzebai. The two places that Chanon argues with Chachamim, the Halacha is like the one that says that I, I see Chanon's point of view, which is Rabbi Yochanan and Zaka. Shiva Dvarim Shomer Admin, and the seven, this is all like a freebie because we're going to go right back to what we started off. We started off saying that three places Rabbi Gamliel says that Halacha is like Admin, and those three places, the Allah is like Admin. The other four out of the seven that Rabbi Gamliel doesn't say, I see Admin, then the Allah is not like him. That's what we're going to get to. But to, in order to get there, we're just going to make a little bit of a circle. Shiva Dvarim Shomar Admin, Ein Halacha Kiyayitzavai. The seven Halachas that Admin says in all these Mishnais, in this parak, Shnei Dayon Xeris, the Halacha is not like Rabbi Gamliel. Whoa, Michael Omar. Maybe what he meant to say is the two things that Charan said, that Allah is like Charan, and like Rabbi Yechim and Zakai, like that said like him. I hold of you. The Shiva Dvarim, but the seven Mishnai, the seven different Allahs. It's not like Admon, it's not like Admon, not like not like not not like none of the seven. That can be. But the, at least three, the Allah is like Admon because Rabbi Gamliel says the Allah is like him. And anytime Rabbi Gamliel says, Rabbi Gamliel says, Rabbi that means the Allah is like him. It doesn't say the Allah is like him. He says, Rabbi I agree to it. And why, why should we say that he argues in Rabbi Yitzchak over here? The two times that Hanan says that Allah is like him. Anything that Hanan said in the Mishnah is in Shnei, Allah is like him. And like Rabbi Yehudah Zagad that says, I see and I like Hanan. Shiva Dvarim Sha'omar Adman. The seven Allahs that Adman says, Ain Allah ki yaitzabai. The Allah is not like Rabbi Gamliel. Hakamay say Allah ki bekulu. But the Allah is like Adman in all seven. All seven. As the Gemara of Omer, abusing Ben Elazar, Mishmed the Chizkia. We just said in the name of Chizkia. Kambagim Shomer Gamliel, Royani is Divri Amon. Halach Kemaisai. Only where Reb Gamliel says Halach Kemaisai. Not all seven. Omar in Lo Yomar Loi. Only three out of the seven where he said Royani is Divri Reb Gamliel. That's where the Halach is like Reb Gamliel. The rest not. So don't tell me that Halach is like. Admin in all seven. The Allah is like Admin in three, not in all seven. Allah Yomar, you're right. Shnei Dvarim Shamachon Allah Kemaisai, okay, it's a boy. Yeah, Shnei Dvarim Shamachon Allah Kemaisai, okay, it's a boy. The Allah is like Khanan in the two Allah he said. Great. Shiva Dvarim Shamachon Allah Kemaisai, the seven Adam he said, Yashmir Shalach Kemaisai, okay, it's a boy. Some out of the seven, in other words, three out of the seven, the Allah is like Admin. Yashmir Shamir Allah Kemaisai, okay, it's a boy. Bottom line is, the Allah is like. Admoin in three places that Rimgum Lil says, Royani is Divri Admoin. The rest, the other four, Allah is not like him. Okay. Inoch Lai says the Heligim Mishnah, the official mission is sponsored by Moshe Kohan Luskos. For living at Torah and continue that's Lacha in Parnosa. So I have a chart here. There's a field. The field is owned supposedly by Shimon, standing on the field. Then you have Ruvain. Ruvain is doing two things here in the Mishnah. First of all, Ruvain signed off on a document. You see it says Chatam, Chosam. He signed off on a document that who owns the field? Shimon owns the field. In this case, these three are not brothers, but they're Reuven, Shimon, Levi, so that's why I'm using them. But Reuven, not only did he sign on the document to say that Shimon owns the field, Reuven is also saying Shimon doesn't own the field. But you signed in the document, you said that he does own the field. He's going to have a very good excuse why he lied and signed in the document. Now, what is he saying? He's saying that really it's his own field. And Levi stole it from him. Levi's a tough guy. And Levi went ahead and sold it to Shimon. Says Ruvain, I rather fight with Shimon, who's standing right there on the field. I'd rather fight with him than fight with Levi. Look, he has a nice white coat. He's a very dangerous man. 
Ruvain, who says that the field is not Shimon's, and he's one of the witnesses, one of the Aidim that signed on the document. Admin Oymer, we're continuing with Admin and Chana. Admin of the Shnei of the Yerings there says, Hasheini Noyachli, I rather fight with Shimon. That's why I lied and I wrote that it's Shimon's. Verishin Koshim Menu. But Levi is a tough guy. I don't want to deal with him. That's why I lied. Vechachamim Oymerim. Vechacham say, Ibed is Chusay. Vechacham say, no, once you sign falsely, you lost. Everything you already admitted that it's Shimon's. Well, how can you come back later and say that it's not Shimon's? You, you're in writing. You admitted that it's Shimon's. Asa Simon laacher ibed es chusay. If you took the field here, so it was. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare, so it's in my handwriting. I apologize. Take this field, and there are two fields here in this picture. They're demarcated. Is that the word? Nobody's going to tell me yes, no. Maybe Gary. Is that the word? Yeah, okay, great. So he made a little bit of a, a blue line over there. And he says, look, the one I want to sell is the one on the left. And Ruvain is signing off that the field that Shimon is standing on right now actually is Shimon's field. In other words, when Shimon is selling one of the two fields, he's saying that the other field is the borderline. I own the field on the other side. And on that, Ruvain is signing. Okay. So if he just took one of his fields and he made it a simon, laacher, ibed is chusay. So Ruvain, who signed off on it, can't come later and say, oh, I, I lied because I wanted to deal. It wasn't about... The field that Shimon is standing on in this picture is not the field that they were arguing on. He just wrote a testimony that it's, that it's a good demarcation. So he lost his chos. All this is when the Ruvain is signing off as a witness. By the way, I just wanted to mention that sometimes, you know, you take a field, you say this field is... The south border, this field is the eastern border. So I heard a very interesting thing that in, I think it was 1878, something like that. There was a, a Jewish guy, I forgot his name already, Simon or something. He found an Arab that owned land. And he made a deal with the guy, it was a whole long story. He made a deal with the guy that he's going to buy the land. The way it worked was he was going to walk as far as he can walk from the morning to the evening. And whatever land he was able to walk, that became his. So he, you walk a little bit till the afternoon, then you make a turn, and that shows what land. So he walked, there was on a donkey, and he just walked and walked. He didn't eat. I think he didn't dive in the day. It was a firm guy, he didn't dive in. He got a header not to dive in, just to grab as much land as he can from the Arab. Walked, didn't eat, didn't drink, made a left turn, and kept on going. And that was it. That's how much he bought from the Arab. What is the name of that piece of land that he bought? Petach Tikva. The entire Petach Tikva is what he was able to buy just by marking off the land on a one-day journey. Omar Abai. A Dayan who doesn't have to read the whole document, so if, just because he signs on something that says that Shimon owns this land, Reuven is a Dayan in this case. Reuven on the right bottom corner, he's the Dayan. He signed off on a document because every document has to be signed off by, by the Dayan. Signed off that, but he didn't read that Reuven. Said, no, they came in front of me and he signed off. That actually could explain, and I saw there's a lot of Pachkevilim. You know, like Tomer was part of the Mikveh Rhein, the company that, that made a nice filter for the Mikvahs, and then uh, Dayanim came out. It could be they didn't even read some of the stuff that they signed. Is not, like doesn't make any sense. So it could be based on this Gemara, you know, they don't have to read it. They just signed the Pachkevil or whatever. Oh, you know, how to use LED lights, and you know, this and that, and the Sheikhs. They signed off. Maybe it could be Mulam The daughter of here. Uh, Aid has to make sure that he reads everything. Adayan doesn't have to read. We just turn to Kuftesam base as a schos to, to, to continue being able to support Torah and to finish Shas with Rebbe Ali. Says Gemara, if he used the field, not 
as he wasn't selling it. He used it as to mark where the border is. It's only because Ruvain was signing off a document that says that this is a border to somebody else. It says Laacher, Osasim and Laacher. Somebody else was involved in the picture. Ruvain was just signing. But if you're selling it, if the you're selling it to Ruvain and Ruvain signed signed off, if it, if, if the fields is for Ruvain, then he doesn't lose his ability to say that he was lying. The Omar if I, if if I would be if I wasn't quiet and didn't make a machan and say no, this is my field. How could you write that this border is your field? It's not your field. It's my field. I couldn't say anything. Why? Then he wouldn't sell me anything. But what are you going to say? You know what? Situations that, that come up where you're scared to admit to something. So you don't admit. But what do you do? You go to two way. Then you say, I'm making a machal here. I'm making a maida, it's called. I'm letting you know that I'm not saying anything to the seller because I want him to sell me the field. I don't want him to make a big issue here. But you should know that the, what I'm signing here, that it's his the field that borders, this field is his. It's not his, it's mine. No. The reason why it wasn't Moisim Maidah, Chavroch, Chavro Islay. A friend has a friend. The Chavro, the Chavroch, Chavro Islay. And the friend's friend has a friend. Like they say, you know, you could always, any person in the world could get to the President of the United States with five friends. I go to this guy, he knows that guy, that guy, and finally, eventually, you get to the President of the United States. I tell my friend, listen, I have a secret to tell you. I'm purchasing a field from Shimon, but you should know that I don't agree to what it says in the star. I'm just going to sign off. It happens to be that's my field that says that it's the border, but it's mine. And swear to me, you're not going to tell anybody. He says, yeah, of course, I'm not going to. Your secret is by me. What does he do? He tells his wife. And his wife tells her friend, and before you know it, the whole neighborhood knows about it, and the guy is not selling the field. So therefore, he doesn't want to do a moida. There's a guy that made the field. He said, somebody came to him and said, this field is a simon. Error. He didn't like it. He said, no, it's mine. It's not yours. Vishachev. And then he died. But before he died, he put a apitropos, somebody in charge. Also apitropos to come to Abaya. So the apitropos comes to Abaya on behalf of the Yisraelim. Abaya. Pulls out this halacha and says, listen, you're arguing something that, that's not going to help you. Why? Because the guy that died signed off on it. And when you sign off that a certain field is a border to another field, and it's not, you admit in, by signing it, it's not yours. That's it. Ibed is chusa. You can't go and, and claim anything afterwards. This abitropus wasn't a joke. This apitropos was the real deal. As the Gemara then says, everybody should, halavai, everybody should have such an apitropos. He's a big Talmud Chacham. Omar, he says, But wait a minute, if the father was alive, here's the picture. Added another line here. The father could have said, wait a minute, I didn't admit that the entire field is Shimon's. All I, Reuben, am signing off is, is that one furrow, just that little, you see that little, the two lines, the two blue, that's what I'm giving, that's what I'm admitting to. I said it's a border, but I didn't say how much is the border, I didn't say the entire field. Oh my lay, Shapir Kamer says, wow, that's very powerful. I'll prove it to you. Tell him, this is the Chon Neman. So he says that Abayir forgot what Rabbi Yechon says, and this Apitropos reminded him. He's believed to say, I only gave you part, a little bit. Oh, so now Rashi says, so the Apitropos went, brought a bunch of rayas, that is actually the guy that died. So he said, okay, Abai says, great. Zil havlei mias telemechad. But you admit that between the blue lines is Shimon's, at least that give back to him. No, says the Talmud Chacham. Havalei richba de dikla. There's a bunch of palm trees, very, very valuable palm trees. If the father was still alive, so he says, have a he could have said, Yes, I admit that that is his, but I went and I took it back, I bought it from him. What is that called, Rabbi Isai? 
I'm the one that is, that's admitting that that furrow is Shimon's. And now I'm saying, I'm taking it back and I'm saying that it's, I bought it back from him. him. How can you do that? It, it's Lachar Zman. Don't you have to say it right away? Maybe you don't have to. Great Taina. If a person says, I came back and I bought it from him, since you only know that it's his from me, so now I'm telling you, it's not his anymore, it's mine. If you're going to look for an apotropos for your children, you should look for such a Tamil Chacham who does great in Bezdin. He knows how to find the schos for the assignment. Says the Mishnah, the official Mishnah, sponsored by Moshe Cohen, the schos. Somebody goes to Chutz Laaretz and he forgot. It's a whole sugya about us. We're going not to Chutz Laaretz. We're leaving Eretz Yisrael. We're going to Midinus Hayom. So here's an interesting picture. There's a, there's a field in the middle. And it's surrounded by other fields. And he used to have a pathway like you see in this picture. Over here, there's different paths to get there. When he left, he left the country. By the time he comes back, all those paths are a field. They planted it in all those paths. Now he doesn't know how to get to this field. He forgot from what direction. He can't prove it. Adam and Oimer again, we're talking about Shnei Dayon Xeris. Adam and Hanan, they made Xeris. Comes Adam and says, Yelech Loi Pick the shortest route, and that's most likely the path that you had, and it's yours. Let him pay $10 million to get a pathway. If he can't afford it, or they, they don't accept his offer, let him fly in a helicopter. Let him go in a drone. There's no way out of it. You can't force anybody to give you a path. I heard there's a guy by the name of Ami Feinstein. You remember him? You remember a guy like that? Ami Feinstein? From Rukhavat? He's a serious, serious character. Look him up. And they, basically, in Rehovot, they said that he's not allowed into Rehovot. He did all sorts of mishigasin. Like he went to a park where it was red and white lines on the sidewalk. He went, he painted it red and blue, uh, blue and white. And he was able to park. But kids, he did all sorts of... Cri- huh? Famous guy? He's a famous guy. Yeah. Ami, Ami Feinstein. Anyway, so they, they said you can't come into Rehovot. So he took a helicopter and he used to fly to his house. The helicopter flew to court. Oh, all thing. Okay. There was... My a guy that worked for me, Tim Statura, I think I showed him once in the Shear actually, when it was, I think it was the Sugi, I, I, I think I might have shown him, the Sugi where it says that some people like their body more than their, they like their money more than their body, and it's like, how's the shy? Well, you're going to die. Tim worked for me for many years, and he used to tell me all the time, if the doctors are going to ask for a lot of money, I'm not paying, I'd rather die than give the doctors money. Okay, fine. So Tim told me, he has, the family has a, a piece of land in Canada. And it's a middle of Yehupitzville. It's a middle of nowhere. There's no roads, no way in the world to get there. The only way to get there, because the land sits on a lake, and what's really good about this land is you can do a lot of fishing. He's, he, looks, he likes fishing. So you get a plane, you pack it up with beer and all sorts of stuff, and you fly into this property, which over the years, many his grandfather built little huts. They have a refrigerator there that works on propane gas. You bring a little propane with you. And you're good to go. And you tell the plane, come and pick me up in a week. Because there's no cell phone coverage. There's nothing there. That you can't, it's hundreds of miles. Huh? Oh, he lands on the water. It's a, it's a plane that lands on the water. He said not once, but many times, they go out there. And all of a sudden, they get snowed in. And the plane can't land. So you wait another week, two weeks, three weeks. And eventually, and you, you don't know when he's coming. And all of a sudden, you hear, oh, the plane's here. You come out. It just reminded me of this idea. There's no way to get to this piece of property unless you fly in the air. Okay. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a joke, because nobody's here, so I don't know if anyone's going to appreciate this or not. The, the, yeah, the, the, uh, let's see if this guy laughs, Taka. Huh? Maybe you also will do a, a laughing track. <laughs> so, um, what is it called? How do you say, one second? Um, I just have to figure out. It'll do. 
Um, okay. Anyways, uh, talking about Yifrach Ba'avir. So a guy jumped out of a plane, and he's Pereach Ba'avir. He was enjoying himself. Free fall from 14,000 feet. Everything's going great. Until he tried to pull the parachute. He pull, pulls, pulls. It's not opening. He pulls the reserve. doesn't open. All of a sudden, he sees a guy coming up towards him. So he screams to him. He says, hey, you know anything about parachutes? So the guy goes, no. But hey, do you know anything about exploding missiles? <laughs> so if the Gemara understands who owns, you see these, these fields, these beautiful fields of tulips, who owns these fields? If it's one, if it's one owner, Shapiko Amar Adwain. So, Mimon of Shachi has a path. Give him the, the, the smallest path. One guy owns all the fields around. Give him one path. Omer Evi Domerav. Show that picture of the fields, please. Omer Evi Domerav. Ki goin shikifua arbo abnei odam arbo ruchu yisrael. No. Very simple. These fields are owned by different people. Two people, five people. It doesn't matter how many, but it's not one person. So you can't go to one guy and say, Mimon of Shach, give me that field. You can't do that. Yachi, my time at Adma. Oh. So if many people own different fields, more than one person owns fields, so how could Admin force one guy to give him a pathway? You're right. If four people bought four fields from four different people, or four people bought from one person, so each guy could say, go to the other guy. Not me. Your, your pathway was somewhere else. Keep leaking, but where's the machlokes? One guy bought up all the properties around. Now the question is, could I put him in a corner and say, okay, now you are one person, shach. Either way, I used to have a path here. Give me a path, even if it's the smallest, the shortest one. Avin says yes. He has to give him a path. You're right, I bought it from four different people, but today, within your four fields that surround my field, there's one path for sure. That's mine. He could say, no. Either you stop fighting with me, or, I'll, you know what? I'll sell back the four fields to, to the other people. I don't want to give you a path. And you know, from them, if I sell it back, if I give it back to the guys I bought it from, you're not going to cut, we already said, one person can't go against four people. The, each one will push it off and say, no, your path was by that guy. You go to that guy, he's going to say, no, your path was over there. It says Tais is very nice. Well, it's not a, such a great taina, I'll give it back. But if you give it back, you're not going to have a feel that. It says Tais, you're right. So now I'll sell you a pathway, but not for a million dollars like we thought in the Mishnah, but I'll sell you a pathway, give me a couple hundred bucks and you get a path. Because... I have a, a weak taina, you have a weak taina, so let's make a deal that, that doesn't, it's not going to hurt us both. Says Gemara, would all the dick little brass. Guy's dying, his sons are getting all the buildings in Manhattan and everything. You know what? I have a daughter, I, I love her also. Let me give her a palm tree. Also, Yasme, Pollock, the Nixe. He said, Oh, not fear. We only get all the buildings in Manhattan and all the stuff. We don't want her to get the palm tree. So they, 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 they divided all the assets without fulfilling their father's will, which is to give the daughter a palm tree. So Rabbi Yisrael said, okay, that's exactly what we learned in the Mishnah. No, each kid is going to say, no, the palm tree is in his property. And he's going to say, no, the palm tree is in the other guy's property. And then she's not going to get anything. He says, Abayit is Rabbi, Rabbi Yosef. No. Hosem kochad v'chad motzim over here by our Mishnah, when there's one field in, in, in the middle of four fields, so each guy could legitimately say, I know for certain that the, the pathway is not in my field, the pathway is in your field. Go to the other guy. But over here, they had no right to divvy up the assets before they fulfilled the Father's will. So what should they do now? They, they, they already split everything up. First, you give her a palm tree. And then start all over. And divvy it up. 
Ahud Omar Lu Diklul Bras. A guy promised a palm tree to his daughter. Shachiv, he died. Vishovak Tre Palgi the Dikla. He left over two halves. Does two halves equal one whole? If Noam was sitting here, he's on a plane somewhere going to Kenya, he would say, Okay, fine. But at the end of the day, do we say two halves? How do you have a half a tree? It's not shot that it's cut this way or cut this way. It explains Rashi that the tree is owned by two people. He has a partnership in the tree. So he's giving her two trees with two partners. Oy vavoy. Says Gemara Shochev Trebali. Yosef Ravashi Kakashi. Says Ravashi. Mikor into the Trey Palgi Dikla and Dikla. Do people, is that what the Lashon of people? We're going by the, what people mean. Do people call two halves a whole? Oy loy. Omalei Rav Mordechai. What would you say, Rabbi Isai? When I read this, I would say no. Why would somebody call two halves of a tree one tree? That's what you give your kid. Two halves. Two. I say, I'm giving you a building. What I meant is, no. I have a building here and I have a building there. Maybe. It's like that, maybe. People consider two halves. When it comes to a palm tree, at least, two halves of a palm tree are considered one. Have a wonderful day.